reason that I want to harvest these is because I feel that this uh, plant here is dying back, even though it's an old dinosaur of its, in of itself. All right. So we just cut the root at the paddle? Is that what you do? Yep. A little bit. Now, these look like aloe on the inside. I'm going to touch the inside of that. Oh. And that feels just like an aloe, but it's got more of a... a fibrous texture on the inside of it. Ah, you'd want to really avoid getting these into your clothing. Now I don't see from the photos that I saw on Wikipedia they have a long spine, not these not little no see -ums. Right here. Oh, what are we looking at? Oh, yeah, those long, big, long spines. So this is not a season for spines either. The spines mm -hmm. fall off. Right. Yeah? Do you find these growing wild anywhere else on the side of the street, or is this just mm. kind of a fluke? Uh, you'll see them here and there. Most people don't want them in their yard because they get the spines get in your clothing and they hurt you. They're painful, actually. <laughs> And do the spines have an acid or is it just the barb? Just the barb. And then I suppose what we'll do with these is we'll, uh, you'll get yours that you want to repot. We'll take a few paddles and slice them like aloe and then dehydrate them. Mm -hmm. No. Why would I do that? I'm going to make soap out of these. Oh. All right. So we have, do you have what you want in that bucket right there? I think so. And you, there's a paddle there for you sure. as well. And then we can see that it's not really bleeding too much where you've chopped it. Is that going to shoot off another paddle or is that going to just heal over? Do you know? Like, I was just going to do that right there. So have you already cut these out here? Somebody else came and harvested them. Okay. okay. Alright, so here's our prickly pear cactus and we're going to dehydrate this down and make a medicinal soap out of this. So let's get started. Now before we can get into the cold process project that will make this soap, we have a little preparation to do. I'm going to process this cactus down into a fine powder and blend it into a clay bar, but first we need a few days to get this dehydrated. The prickly pear is also known as a nopalis cactus, and they flourish in the deserts of the southwest. Now I don't ever see these things outdoors where I live, so I was surprised to learn that they produce a purple fruit that people harvest and eat. In fact, this green paddle here is also considered a superfood. I was expecting this to be something like processing an aloe plant, and in fact it's not at all like that. It's more like cutting into a green pepper. It smells more like a green pepper, and people even slice it like a pepper and put it in their omelets in some places. The inside is very fibrous, and it's a lot more dry than I expected. There's none of that soft mucus juice like you would find in an aloe plant. After dehydrating this down for two days, I'm going to take the dried pieces and run them through a coffee grinder. Now, if you thought you had to be careful during soap making, this part of the project was the biggest annoyance. As you saw in the beginning of the episode, there were no spines on this cactus, and the ones that are there seasonally are large white barbs the size of a sewing needle. Well, despite that, once the material was dehydrated, tiny little hair-sized shards appeared, and they were impossible to see, and they stuck all across my hands and fingers when I was washing the dehydrator and the coffee grinder, and this stung for days before it wore away. Another thing to mention while I was making the powder is that it's very light and easy to disrupt, but it didn't hang in the air the same way that the aloe powder does, so it wasn't much of a hazard to breathe. The powder stayed around my hands and it didn't drift up to my face, but even so, I'll remind you that this is dehydrated and if you breathe the powder, your lungs have moisture and you don't want dehydrated herbs to be rehydrating in your lungs, so you have to wear a mask when you're working with this. Now, if this is all starting to sound like a bit of a nuisance to do so far, I'll just point out that you don't have to make cactus powder. You can buy it online under the name Nopales Cactus Powder. Those two paddles gave me about an ounce of powder. So you can imagine if you buy a pound of this online for a four or five dollars, that's a huge amount of cactus. So it's probably much easier to do it that way. All right, it's time to close up my recipe notes and make some room to get started.
The first thing we'll do is make a lye water solution. In this case, I'll be substituting 100% of the water for aloe juice. I'll dissolve my lye and set this aside to cool until it reaches room temperature. If you buy this aloe juice already packaged as a food product in the pharmacy section of your grocery store, then you don't have to worry about pre-preparing it, boiling it down or anything. It's just ready to pour and mix. I'm gonna work with these oils for just a few minutes and get them all blended in together before we add the lye solution. When we're ready to pour, I wanna make sure that the lye solution and the oils are within 15 degrees of each other. So the lye's already been cooling down for about an hour and both of these are sitting at just about room temperature. You'll see that there's a little bit of a solid oil floating in the bar as I'm emulsifying it. And that is the coconut oil. As we're working this through, it's the coconut oil that will be the last to mix in. And so that will end up being our 5% super fat. Now's the best time to add our fragrance oil. We'll be adding green clover and aloe, and that comes from Nature's Garden, and it's a very beautiful, light-scented fragrance, but it also sticks in the soap very well. So if you're looking for something that's not gonna waft away, but it still isn't too strong, this is a terrific choice. I've got bars that I've made of this particular fragrance from six months ago that still smell the same as when they were about two or three days old after they'd been cut. Now I'll separate this out into three parts. We're going to be using three colors. This is a, a heavy layered bar. Again, it's a cactus theme, so I kind of wanted to go with an earth tone. And we're gonna be using the cactus colors. So we're going to use Hollywood pink, which will give us that prickly pear purple color. And then we're going to be using a median color of just titanium dioxide to lighten it up a little bit. And we will be using our cactus powder as a nice light green. The titanium dioxide here is dissolved in water and it does look like a lot. There's only just a teaspoon in there. If you go overboard with the titanium dioxide, you can get glycerin rivers, you can get all sorts of unpleasant effects. So it's important to just sort of keep that in moderation. Remember, that's only one pound of soap in that cup. I'm going to start off by just adding half the cactus powder. I have a different intention for the rest of that. So we'll see what color this gives us and see if we need to make some adjustments from there. This purple pear color will go into the bottom of the mold first. And I made this part a little larger than the other two parts because we're actually going to put a little bit of this into a piping bag for the top of our embellishment. So I'll save some of this and this will give me plenty of time to set this aside and let it firm up. I'm gonna dust in a pencil line here and that can be a little bit tricky because if you add too much, your layers of soap might not adhere and if you don't put enough, you can't see the pencil line. So one of the advantages about doing this with a little bit of a dehydrated herb is that as it touches the moisture, it'll start to rehydrate. That makes this a little bit easier to adhese the next level of soap when you're doing herbs instead of the mica powders, which won't really re-moisturize or rehydrate because they're just sort of a mineral anyway. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're working with pencil lines. These dried herbs work a lot better in keeping your pieces of soap together. Next is our white layer. Pretty simple, I'm just gonna spoon this on top and the texture is really thickening up. So the bottom is firm enough to hold the middle layer and the middle layer is thick enough to just set it in nicely. I'm going to dust my second line in here and this time you can even see this one better. And watch as this turns from a light green to a darker, kind of a matcha tea, dark colored green. And that is the powder instantly rehydrating. And that's good because since it's moist, the next layer will go on top and it'll stick much better. With a couple of tablespoons of powder left over, I'm gonna dump that right into our third layer of soap and start mixing this in well. 
Now once we get this mix in well, I'm going to add one ounce of gray bentonite clay. You can add white kaolin and any other version of clay that you might like, maybe a French green clay, but I tend to grab the bentonite clay for things that are tinted green already. I think that's a nice complementary uh, clay to go in with our, our cactus powder. After a few minutes of mixing, there are a few large pieces of clumps in here and some herbal specks. I want to blend that down even a little bit more fine, so we're just going to give it a round with a stick blender just to get that smoothed out. Now it's time to add the final layer of soap, and as you can see, this is a beautiful silky smooth texture. It smells very pleasant, and I can smell the cactus powder mingling with the fragrance, and they're very complimentary. It's really a nice, it's a, a nice experience. Now before we started this project, I did go ahead and pre-make some embeds that we're about to put onto the top. If you'd like to replicate these embeds, the easiest way is to use a melt and pour. You can make them in about 10 minutes before you start the project, or you can do them the cold process way and make them a day ahead of time. But if you'd like to find this particular cactus mold right now, it's over on the shelves at Walmart. You can find it over in their bakery aisle, and if you happen to be watching this video when those molds are no longer available, then you could also very easily make something very similar out of a soap dough recipe. So that would be another alternative if you want to put a cactus embed in there. To line the center of the loaf, I'm going to stick little white cactus spines right along the center. And as you can see, this is very easy to make. You just pour yourself a flat layer of white melted pour and then slice them up into these little spines and stick them anywhere you like. And you can expect some of them will break. Most of them will not break. It's perfectly fine. You can do this with cold press or you can do it with a melt and pour, but either way, this takes about all of five minutes to make. So these are perfect just to fill up that center area. Now you might remember about 10 minutes ago, we set aside some of that pink soap to firm up so that we could pipe it on top. And to top off the embellishments, we're going to add our own purple pear fruits right across the top as the final pass. Now on a real cactus, once you see these as those bulbous fruits that are plucked and people make jelly and other types of food out of, well, if they're left alone, they turn into a beautiful flower. Many of them are purple, some are yellow, some are white. They're absolutely gorgeous. So here we'll have these bulbous flower shapes that'll be the final accent on this design. And once we're finished with this, there's nothing left to do but give it 24 hours to firm up so that we can cut it open and see what the design looks like on the inside. I did give these just a little bit more than 24 hours just to make sure I could get it out of the mold without messing up and fussing with the top of the design. And so very carefully, I'm gonna line these up and slice right through. And here you can see, as we reveal the very first piece, this absolutely adorable bentonite clay, aloe, and cactus powder soap bar, complete in full bloom cactus colors. Thank you. 